Hey guys, I'm Tony Moore and welcome to This Is How We Do It, which is a segment that we're just making out of the air. They're all just reaching for a piece of you. Today, we're going to look at this Rogers uh, Tom over here. Um, it's been sitting on the shelf for a bit. This is a nice drawing drum as well. We'll get to that a bit later. It's a lovely Australian made drum. But for today, this is what we're looking at. This is a Rogers um, 15 inch Tom. Um, the mount's been removed at some point. Um, and what I decided to do with this drum to introduce it into part of my collection is I wanted to remove the drum rack. I'm going to remove all the lugs, the hoops, the tension rods, the name badges and everything. I'll send all the metal off to my powder coaters. I want to powder coat it in a satin black. And um, I'm going to finish, refinish the drum in a black um, stained hand rubbed polyurethane lacquer. Um, but the purpose of this video, you'll see this drum progress over the next few videos or whatever. But the purpose of this video is I wanted to see how long does it actually take to remove this laminate, which is actually Formica Lemonex. How, do, how long does it take to remove this from a standard drum? I don't know how it's been applied on this particular one. We'll know as soon as I get it over and start peeling it off. But I wanted to do a bit of a time stamp on it and see how long does it actually take from beginning to end. So I've got a few things around me ready to go. Um, no real rush, but we're just gonna get into it. So take off all the drum lugs. Um, remove all our tension rods. I just throw them in a box as we go. We'll um, try to put a clock on the screen when we do the uh, video. Hopefully we'll shoot it without any edits. Though sometimes whenever someone sends me a message or the phone rings it just cuts off. I apologize in advance. So here's our drum. Serial number on the inside. Just in here, you can see there, it reads 24683. And it looks like it has a build date of 1972. So not a 60s drum, it's a 72 drum. Uh, these were a lovely, lovely made drum shell. Um, beautiful double 45 bearing edge with a, um, a ply or a, um, a laid up inner ring on the inside. They always sounded great. I never heard a bad one. So yeah, lovely drum. Um, edges seem not too bad actually at the moment so when I redo the drum you'll see the process that I use um, but I'm basically rebirthing this drum we just lost something important I'm sure anyway um, let's get this one off so now some people ask me why do I do powder coating on hardware um, when the chrome is actually really quite good and it is all of this chrome on this drum would come up beautifully um, the answer is just really quite simple. I actually like black hardware, particularly satin black hardware. So for me, it's just a personal choice. I have this drum. I don't have a white drum set. I don't have any other Rogers drum kits that I need to supplement this to. So I'm just going to turn it into actually a SNOM. So I'm going to put a snare mechanism on this. I've actually got some parts for it already. Let's see, we've got a nice new Rogers clock face snare mechanism which will mount somewhere on here. I've also got a wonderful little Rogers frame which means I don't need to cut a snare bed and that's the reason that I'm retrofitting it in this way. Um, okay so let's break out the parts on the inside. Um, these are actually a slot screw or by, look, by the looks of that maybe a six mil um, socket wrench. Either way, we'll have one of those here, I'm sure, or we will find one. Again, I'm trying to do most of this stuff in such a way that you can do it at home. Um, I don't want to professionalize it too much for you. Um, when we start professionalizing things, it just means you've got to send stuff off, off all the time. And at the moment, if you've got plenty of time on your hands, you may as well get your hands dirty and dive in. Okay, so one quick tip when you're taking off lugs, I generally use a head on the underside of the drum. I let everything fall into the underside and then I pop it to the side later on. So 
just going to whiz around on these. So automatically, I've already there's a couple here that are a different size, which is very frustrating. So we'll jump onto a different size. That sort of suggests to me that at some point, a few of these may have been replaced. Um, bit hard to tell, no real way of knowing. Um, they're a lovely casing. You can see over here, the lug casing's quite nice. It's a nice design, silent. So anyway, off to the powder coater with all of those. When I'm refitting these lugs, I never use a drill. Just so you know, it's always hand tension. So to not choke the drum shell or put too much tension on things. So I'm just checking that little um, socket that I used. That one's a um, quarter inch. I think, I think that one there was actually not a quarter inch. <laughs> I can't even see what it is. Might've been seven mil actually. So um, I'm, I think they're all basically the same. I don't think the lugs have been swapped out. Just rethinking that. Um, could have just set up with the wrong socket in advance. Apologies for that. Okay, that's all off. We'll scoop up all of these, throw all of those into our buckets. There we go, that component. Okay, two things left to do. We've got our dampener to remove, and we've also got a couple of badges here and here to remove as well. Um, the dampener will just be a wrench of some sort. Looks like about 10, 11 mil. It doesn't matter, we've got an adjustable one. We're just going to wind that off, keeping everything together as best we can. Now, one of the dangers of having a bench like this, with all these little holes, is if I drop something, it generally goes straight through. <laughs> oh, before I, I found this the other day, it's a, a pre-powder coated one. So that's sort of the, what we're going to do with everything powder coated up to look like that. So we satin black on black. with pink drum heads. No, we're not doing pink drum heads. <laughs> Probably just two white heads. Um, I restored a, um, a late 60s Rogers kit like that. It had been left downstairs in a um, in a basement at somebody's house. He rang up and said, man, I got this old drum set. I heard you, you uh, renovate drums. Do you want it? Give it to you for 500 bucks. So I went out and grabbed the kit. It was a great kit. It had um, 24 inch. Uh, it was 13, 14, 16, 18, but all the chrome had peeled, which is why I actually um, stripped it all off and actually went and powder coated it. Um, that particular drum set, I was out playing it at a gig and a guy came up to me and said, mate, I want this drum set. It sounds amazing. I've never heard anything like it. I had super tricked that, that kit up. It was my one of my recording kits, so I'd made sure that the drums um, and bearing edges were re-cut as factory but trued properly and then um, waxed up and reinforced all the lugs were tension set so that they resonated everything was rims mounted and floating and the drums sounded phenomenal um, anyway um, he bought that drum set off me that very night and picked it up about two months later which was when i actually let it go <laughs> it took that long to get it out of my hands and I always miss that drum set. It floats around. I think it was used on a couple of Australian records, uh, one by a band called Speedstuff. So if you want to hear that drum set, you may be able to download some of those songs and have a listen. 
Um, okay, so we've got our little um, grub screw. Uh, sorry, our, um, I forgot what that's called. Anyway, our little collet there, we'll pop that out. We'll also pop these out. Now what happens here with these is that they have a little nail, they drive it through and then they bash it over on the other side. You have to be careful when you're bending metal. If metal heats, it'll snap. So we wanna just slowly move it as we go through. We'll, I'll flip it over and see if you can see what I'm doing here. Just down here. You see the nails are bent back over. So just using a blade, just gonna pry it up just a little at a time. Like so. Now I'm gonna put my finger against that and bend it back. I can actually feel that's already about to snap. So um, that may happen with all of these. It's not too bad so far. Um, ironically, it's not a big deal. You can still buy similar nails at any hardware store. So um, yeah, pretty simple. Now to tap those out, a couple of options. I can either nail them straight through the bench, <clears throat> these little holes I have here, or I can tap them and just rest it against my finger, which is what I'm actually gonna do. So as they come out, just twist with your finger and pop them out. You can see those little nails, flat head on the top. Quite simple. I keep all of those. I try to use everything original that I can. Even when I'm actually rebirthing a drum set. So that first one that I was playing with actually snapped off. Again, I'm not too worried about it. I actually have other pins already in my stash of stuff to do. So now we've got one that's broken off. How do we get it out? We get a little piece like this. A little spike of some sort fairly simple find the hole that we were we were working out of and just give it a gentle tap you see it's come out here on this side get some pliers um, depending on your expertise you can use all whatever um, if you're not sure what to do so there's our badge off there's our pin if you're not sure you can use side cutters like this just to rest underneath it and you hold on the pin and then pull it back it's another way to get it out if you, depending on what tools you have okay so we've got one out we've got one left to get back out we're probably about 10 minutes into the uh, project so far Now, when we start removing the wrap on this, we're gonna to have to do a couple of precautions um, on the inside. Obviously, this is sprayed with a fleck paint. Um, we're using thinners. I don't want bleed through the hole. Coming back through here when I'm using thinners on the other side. So I am gonna tape up fairly heavily just to prevent anything. Okay, almost there. So lift that back up on the outside, tapping. Ta-da. Again, we'll use these this time, just to show you how that works. You actually pull back on itself, just pulls the pin out. It's fairly simple. Same on all of them. If you need more distance, release, grab it again, lift it back out. This one's a bit close still. Look what's happening on the inside. We'll just tap him over a bit more. Just grab your hammer. I oh, know it's not a hammer. Okay, it's enough. Now that actually broke off inside. For now, I'm not even gonna bother with it. It's in there, it'll come out when I'm ready. Though, let me just take it out now. <laughs> this 
so that people don't have to comment and go, oh, I would have taken that out. <coughs> Pardon me. Coronavirus. No, it's not coronavirus. Joking. Um, okay, just getting the piece out there. All right, we've got one less thing, one, one more thing to put on here. That's a little eyelet. That was what I was looking for before. Um, how do we get an eyelet out? Generally, an eyelet is a piece of brass or aluminium, and it's a tube that's been flanged on the top, smacked over. It goes through the drum, and they normally smack it flat on the other side. This particular one, you'll see, hasn't been flattened. It's just halfway through. So there's a few ways to get it out. I don't need this. I've got buckets of them, so I'm happy to destroy it, but I'm going to try and just do it in such a way that we may be able to get it out in one piece if you had to reuse it. So a nice sharp tool again, I'm just going to tap underneath the edge and I'm going to move it around as I go. You'll see it's just starting to lift. I can't really tap it out from the, the inside yet because it's, it's very tight against the shell. Just having patience at the moment, just running around the edge. I'm trying not to put my hands in front of the camera, but um, I'm going to. <laughs> so once again, trying to just pry that up gently. Being aluminium or um, sometimes brass, they actually will break pretty quick. Um, it's extremely thin, it's probably half a mil. Um, starting to lift, which is good. All right, so it's lifting out. It's not, it's not one of them. We, when we actually tap that back in or reseat that, that all bends back over. Um, I can now see it's clear on the other side. So I'm actually just gonna tap it now. An easy way to do it is grab yourself a socket and match it up to the hole. So get one that's a similar size. Okay, so that one is slightly larger still. <clears throat> that one's still too large. Let's go back to this one. Okay, and get yourself a bit of a hammer. If you haven't got the right size, the reason we're using a socket is it's just a smooth, it's a smooth shape on the other side. So if it does dint in, it's not gonna be detrimental. Okay, just punching in there. Just to release that a bit more. Not too bad. Decided I'll just use this one as well because I have it there. Give it a bit of an edge. And that's actually just pushing it through at the moment. You can see it moving up there on that side. Flip it up here. When we get up to this side, we can use our choppers. If you come up on the top and you'll see we're just lifting that back. Now I'm just doing it very, very, very gradually and trying to not let it pop. Um, as we just get it to that point. Okay, there we go. Free. This is why we're trying to not to pop. If that was actually a, um, well, I was gonna rebuff that, it would still cover it, but it's unfortunate that you'd end up chipping. And the reason is, is just that the wrap, as it goes over, has a little edge. And on these, when they smack them down, it's a bit hard to see, but they actually flare up on the outside. So this part is wider in diameter than the actual shank itself, so it pulls out. So you just gotta be a bit careful. To reuse that and to prep that for going back in, I'll see if I've got some other pliers here. So I use some alligator nose pliers and I flatten that down and just walk it all the way around. At first, this is step one. 
just to flatten that edge. Once I've got that flat, I then just put a little bit of bending on the inside. I'm just pulling that down so that when it goes back in, it's all good. <clears throat> I do a similar thing just with the flange here. I just gently, without marking, pulling that down a little bit. Okay, so if I want to reuse it, I can. Ta-da! Okay, so drum is all stripped of hardware. Now we want to remove this drum wrap. Okay, so we're just going to take it over to the little arm over here just to pull this wrap back. Let's see how long it takes. A lot of people say that to take these off, they spend four hours or forever and they chip them off in little pieces. Um, I'm just treating it as though it's a piece of lemonade that we would normally apply in a cabinet making perspective to furniture. And I'm just gonna remove it how I would normally remove lemonade. So I've got a bottle of thinners. So just general purpose thinners. I've got a little hammer in case I need it. I've got a nice hard scraper and I've got my sharp little blade again, which I use for everything. First thing you have to do is lift the edge. Um, actually, I forgot. I mentioned we need to cover up these holes. It's important I do that and I almost forgot it. So let's just quickly cover those. Bit of tape. Now, I'm just gonna tape this one and we'll see how it goes because it's mine. I'm not too particular whether or not the inside finish is ruined or wrecked or destroyed in any way. Other people, maybe. If it was a client, I certainly would do it a different way. The professional way to do it is to plug each of these holes from the inside with a little piece of rubber, a rubber um, little plug, which is you buy from a, a store, cheap ads. Um, and you plug each one of those, tap them in, they stay in place until you're finished. You also mask the lead edge and then put plastic around the inside. But I'm not going to do that because A, I don't have the time, and B, it's not part of the end goal, which is this drum's for me, and I'm altering it from original, so keeping original finishes is not actually a priority for me. Um, though I do respect that a drum should be kept as original as possible. But like all my drums, I want drums I play, I don't want drums that just become little garage queens or studio queens sitting in corners. So just taping up all these holes. Be firm with your finger when you're pushing down. You do actually want to make sure they, they're sealed around those holes. Although we don't aim at those holes with the thinners, it does run over them and they will actually go in the holes if you're not careful. Even if you are careful, it will still go in. <laughs> So plugging up everything we can. You'll notice our little badge there. Obviously I want to keep the badge in place. So I'm just going to find myself some old crappy plastic. Out of the bin. Just going to put plastic over it. Because if I put tape on it, I'm going to wreck it. So I'm just going to put plastic and then just tape it over. Certainly won't do a beauty contest at this point, but that's okay. So we've got some large holes <clears throat> over here where the mount used to be. Um, because I'm not putting the original hardware, as in the original tom mount, back on, um, I will actually plug that after I've got the drum all stripped and before I st st stain it and sand it. For so now, we're just going to tape everything up. And you'll see why as we do go through the process. Kind of miss that hole. Throw another bit on there. <clears throat> um, I guess one thing I should mention with the tape, whatever tape you use, don't use masking tape, standard masking tape because it actually will rip off all the um, speckled paint on the inside. This is a special tape, it's actually made by 3M. I don't know if you can see it in there, it's made by 3M and um, it's an automotive tape. So it, it sticks, but it doesn't stick forever. Well, you don't want it to stick forever, that would be bad. 
and we don't want it to leave residue. We also don't want it to leave marks. Okay, so taped up there. Last thing I actually want to do here is just put some tape around this lead edge. Um, now, how I'm going to do that is in reverse. I'm actually going to tape the outside. Now, I'm not sure if you can try and spin this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm actually taping down on the bearing edge, leaving the wrap in place all the way around like this. I'm pushing fairly hard. I do want to seal. <clears throat> so it's important that we actually do seal this drum edge with this tape from the thinners, which we're going to use. And good thing is, like everything that's being filmed, you get to see if it's a, if it's a success or not. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I, I just like trying stuff differently. Um, I, yes, I know how, how you should do all of these processes and I've done it professionally for three decades. But the purpose of this is not to show you how good I am, but to actually encourage you and show you how good you can be at doing this kind of stuff and how you can do it with what you have at home. Um, I will do some videos at some point um, showing you my actual professional processes on certain things. Um, but that's not the purpose of, of this channel. It's not the purpose of now. So as you can see, I've just rolled that back in on itself and it's sealed up that edge. I'm also going to tape off the last little bit of the edge. And I'm not the easier if I... I am actually finding it difficult doing it in a way that you can still see it. So, albeit a fraction slower doing it this way. Um, just trying to get the camera view in there is a bit annoying. <clears throat> but, we will persist somehow. Actually, I'm just going to do it because otherwise you'll get bored and go and watch the cooking channel. <laughs> For all those kids out there who are, who are playing that building game, who have stopped and come to watch this, thank you. <laughs> you will be rewarded for your efforts. Whatever the building game is. Minecraft. Okay. Minecraft, I am told, by my awesome camera operator, who is a Minecraft expert. Actually, that was just for him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben, for helping out. Okay, so same process, just running around the drum. All these little things do take time, but I guess you'll appreciate it when you get to do the stuff yourself. Um, these kinds of things are very much tactile, using your hands, using touch and feel. Obviously you need to have good eyesight to be lining things up, but my eyes are not what they used to be, which is why I wear glasses all the time now. I look much different when I don't have these on. Anyway, it is what it is. So again, just rolling the tape down. You'll see I'm not just wiping it straight over. It's because the tape does actually have to form and I'm forming it around the edge and then I'm laying it down in there, reversing it on itself. Okay, all good. One last bit of tape on the inside. Cover up the last little bit in case we get a bit more of that leakage over the edge. Which we're trying not to do. All good. Okay, so that's now five minutes longer. <laughs> now we'll go back to where we were. Over to the bench. Little arm. This is just a little arm I made it apply just quick to help with this kind of process. It's that simple. If you don't have something like this, easiest way to do it is get a piece of um, in American language, that would be maybe four by two or um, something about 80 by 40 mil thick. Just slab it on here, push out the side a couple of clamps and use it the same way. Um, I'm right-handed. I'm actually am ambidextrous, but predominantly right-handed. So I've set this up to work from the right hand. Um, that means my right hand's doing a lead and I'm pushing forward and over. When you're using sharp things, never pulling backwards. If you see me pulling it backwards, I apologize in advance, 
I forgot to take my own advice. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm actually gonna do here, and this is the only time I'll actually use a heat gun, standard heat gun, is just to lift this, this edge. I'm gonna do a couple of versions for you. I'm gonna do the heat gun here. I'll do thinners in the, well, thinners here somewhere, and then I'll just do the other one just by using the mechanical process. So I'm just gonna heat it to release the glue. It only takes about 20 seconds, if that. Okay, so that, that's hot to touch, much like a latte cup. Just sliding the blade underneath there. And see where the lug's been, it's actually cut the laminate. Um, it's quite soft. Be careful, <laughs> I was just watching myself. If you do put the blade there and push and slip, you will cut yourself. Um, so that heating that up there on this lead edge is actually reducing um, the fatigue. Okay, now that's all I really want to re release back to. All I'm actually doing is releasing it off this laminate, that's it. I don't wanna heat up this next part. So that's when it's heated. Let's do this side just mechanically. It will require a little bit more force, but we'll see if it's any better. So it's a bit more crunchy. <laughs> and it's already snapping off little pieces. So, yep, yeah, it is, look, it's possible, but it's just easier with this. Now, the middle section, it's got a slight lift in here already. And I'm gonna use the thinners because I can. And we'll just see how that goes lifting off this lead edge. Just blade goes in. And to be honest, it's the easiest of them all. It literally just eats the glue. So there's the three different ways. Heat gun, heat gun no heat gun and thinners. Thinners just out kills it straight away. So once I've got a, an edge lifted, I can then use a bit of thinners. And I'm only just putting little bits just to release the glue and get this started. Okay, so we've got a little bit of crap hanging there. So a bit more glue. Um, where the lugs have been clamped down, that's where you'll find probably the most difficult to release. And that's just because it's had a lot of pressure put on it. The more pressure or tension on that glue after 60 years, it's pretty tough. Just gonna mechanically tap this. Even with thinners, it's a bit tough. All right, starting to lift. You can hear it in pitch. You can hear it releasing in pitch, like so. Okay, get some thinners under there. Okay, all right, we've got a start. Now, once you've got that little edge lifted, you're ready to start um, pulling this drum apart. Right, so we're gonna lift this with one hand and just a little bit of glue underneath. The whole process is to let the glue do all the work or as much of the work as we can. Now this laminate is really quite brittle. I'll let you know straight up. Be very careful of your hands. This will cut you if you snap it in the wrong direction. So to avoid it, I'm gonna use my, my stiff um, little scraper right now and that's just going to give me a bit of leverage where my hands don't need to be near it um, bit of pressure running the thinners in let the thinners do the job so you can actually see it moving around it actually eats in i'm not it's not this tool so the scraper is not doing the work the glue is here, I don't, have, I don't have thinners so much. It's slowly going through, not much pressure. Um, and it's just eating that glue up. Once we get a fair way around, we can go back to holding it with our hand. Apologies, I keep pouring into this hole. <laughs> and I've already told you don't do that, but I keep doing it by accident. <clears throat> One last thing to remind you of is that Thinners is highly flammable, but it's also a vapor. So for those of you who are into vaping, you'll have a great time. For those who aren't, after a little while of using thinners, you can get a bit lightheaded. So try and do it. You'll hear I got a fan going. 
um, it's actually not pointing at me, but normally the fan's just blowing stuff away. Straight away, what I can see is this particular drum has actually got a join right in the middle on the outer veneer, right through here. Um, it's not going to affect what I have intended for it, but because I'm doing a black stain, but if you were doing a natural stain, it would abs absolutely affect it. This is why this particular drum was selected to be wrapped. So it's getting a little bit stiff just here because we're approaching where lugs would be. So be careful not to use too much pressure. If you hear um, cornflakes or cocoa pop noises, snap, crackle and popping, that's probably not a good sign. Trying to keep it in contact and let the glue be, a, be eaten by the actual um, thinners itself. So now the difference between this one and the last drum that we did, which was a premium one, is the material itself, the plastic was easier to get a handle on and hold. This one is a little harder. And it will come a time it will actually just snap off because the, the pressure that I'm putting on it. But still let the thinners do the work and the blade will just help guide it through. So it's starting to break right there around those lug points again. So we have to be careful. Um, as soon as the material starts breaking, it just gets really messy. So I'm just going to get this tool in here and I'm just gonna lift that one up. Oops, snap, snap. Okay, so I'm gonna break this piece off. There. So you can see my little join through the middle. And we'll, we'll start that little process again. <clears throat> so this is one of the differences between Rogers and the other manu drum manufacturers is this laminate and glue that they use is really tough. But the, the actual glue itself here is just cabinet glue. So it will actually let go. You can feel it slimy. It, it, it is exactly what we use in cabinet land. So um, the trouble will always be around these points here. So again, I am not trying to chip into the wood or anything. I'm literally just going to lift the edge again. So we got something that we can work under. Now you don't use the heat, the hot air gun <laughs> and thinners. Heat, spark and thinners means fire. So we're not going to do that. But I am going to go this other side with the heat gun only in a, in a minute. And we'll, We'll see how that goes. Just get another different tool. Okay, this is slightly thinner, this blade. It's not quite as thick. You see that? It's probably half. So just going to have a slightly thinner one here so that we can get a bit more leverage and get our glue releasing with the thinners on the back side. It likes the thin one a little bit better. Still got a, bit, a couple of sticky spots here, again, around where the lugs are. But we're, we're, we're getting traction again. So you can see that's just starting to lift there now. Once we've got our edge up again, we're wanting to keep that edge and poke the thinners in behind it and then just keep the thinners active. Now, one of the main reasons thinners is such a good product 
because it doesn't wreck the timber and it actually takes the glue off. So you can see that glue, it softens it and just removes it. And so you get a drum shell that's pretty much ready to go. A very light sand on that drum shell and we're ready to stain it and away we go. So it's slowly getting there. This one's a little bit better this time, this blade. <clears throat> we'll see how it goes when we come up next to our um, tension points again. So it eats a lot of glue, a lot, a lot of thin ends, I should say. Um, just keep that in mind. It's constantly chewing that thinners, and the thinners are also absorbing. Um, if you can get a V shape, it, that works the best because it keeps the liquid in the center, the thinners into the middle. So here we're passing over now those those lug points, and it's clearly working better with a thinner blade over the lug points because it's not fracturing. So we'll just work past each one of those. Once we get a bit of a run, you then have, it comes off a lot more easy. But so far, not too bad. So we'll keep, I'll keep rolling this camera till I'm halfway. So at the moment I'm about a quarter of the way. We'll get halfway round and then I'll go off camera and finish it. Um, but then you, you'll get a basic idea of how long it takes. I'll continue to um, film it so you can see how long it actually does take. Once again, I uh, mentioned in other videos, probably the worst drums in the world to do are actually the Yamaha 9000 recording customs that have been wrapped. They are, um, the glue they use is insane. Um, it is a thinners based glue, but it is so thickly wrapped that um, it just creates massive, massive amount of problems trying to get rid of it. Let's take it all off and then to to prep it i've made i've made a lot of drum sets 9000 series kits turn them from wrapped into a stained finish and a lot of work's involved so don't ever underestimate what's ahead of you um so far this is all coming off pretty good it's a little tougher than some of the rogers drums i've done in the past but um not much So a few snap, snap, crackle and pops again. So we just want to make sure we get on the right side of that little lug part. <clears throat> now that's, that's what we're trying to avoid, this separation just here. So it's... Once it starts doing that, you have problems. So I'm just going to use this tool. I'm going to drop that in there again and just try and get that corner lifted before it runs off too far. Every time it happens, you get, literally will go back to square one and it just slows the process up. lifting. <clears throat> Let's see how much it's lifting now. So it's, it's just separating in different places. 
Um, that's partly because the Lemon X is actually quite brittle. It's only stable when it's flat on a surface. So when it's not on flat on a surface, it's actually quite a brittle product. Um, so much so it just snaps like so. Yeah. And as you can see how sharp that is. So, and that's an edge there. And if I push it into here, it's just sharp. So you do have to be careful. But the good news is it all can be done and it can be done very successfully and sometimes simply. This one again is just breaking around that point. Um, I'm just gonna snap this off again. Bang. Because it's annoying. Um, I just wanna get this point here fixed. Otherwise, we can be chasing our tail again and I'd rather just get the thing under control. Okay, it's not too bad. Starting to lift again. Okay, so we got that. <clears throat> so it's always around wherever there's been a clamping system on the on the drum. I'm not sure what kind of volume of drums they were making in 1972, um, but if the glue hasn't dried between wrapping and putting the, your lugs back in place, it can actually compress the glue really fast and just becomes very, very, very stuck down. But all in all, it's actually progressing quite well. Trying to keep all the pieces to a minimum. Be mindful of your hands. Um, generally, I nearly, will nearly always have a cut or two <clears throat> after pulling one of these off. So, think we're we're coming up to halfway I think that's halfway just here so There's a couple of ways <clears throat> that you can actually approach the lug point. One's on an angle, so you bring the blade down on an angle like so. Other ways front on or the opposite angle. Um, to be honest, you have to sort of just feel each one as it happens. Um, sometimes there's resistance in one area and there's not in the other. You just sort of have to give it a good shot. Again, try not to put too much pressure. The last thing you want is to slam your hand through into the eight. But this is the important section, just getting past these points as best we can. And then we'll have hit halfway. Which I think I uh, probably, I would estimate maybe 15, 20 minutes for one side. Is that right? 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay. Wow, it's been a long video. So probably looking at about an hour, which is a lot more than what it would normally take. Generally 20 minutes, I think, is what I would take to get one of these off on a, on a good day. And we'll just get past this little point. And then I'll come back when it's all done.
Okay, so just gonna bust the piece off. So get this piece done. Again, it's always catching around those little points there. Um, easiest way to get that off again, just a little sharp, a sharp blade, a couple of taps just to lift it. Once that edge is lifted, get some thinners under it and um, it'll lift from there. Okay, so that's actually coming up good there. And then you're back on track again. All right, so that's about halfway around. We're getting close, we've got about halfway to go. I'll finish this up and come back when I'm near the end of it and um, we'll say hey then. Hey guys, welcome back. Tony Moore here, and this is how you do it. Um, all right, so we've stripped this drum off um, of all its wrap. I've given it a, a scrape down, and then I've also given it just a light sand with the old sander. You can see by the mess on the floor, um, that's the bits that come off. We basically came off in a third, big piece of a third, and then a couple of hand width spans. Hardest bit was around where our lugs had been locked in, so had a little bit of trouble getting around those, a little bit more than normal. But that's okay, it still worked out good. Drum is nice. Um, you can see this was was from factory what I would consider a B shell, which means designated to be wrapped rather than stained because of the actual veneer joins and stuff like that. It's not gonna make any difference to me um, because I'm gonna stain it black. And the reason I use black a lot is because it gives me the wood grain, but it goes with all my other gear. So this drum's gonna come up really good. I was thinking about the mount on the side and um, wondering whether or not I plug it and I've decided I'm not going to plug the mount on the side at all because um, being a snare drum and this is going to be a snom, a 15 inch snom, um, it's actually going to have a lot of air moving in it. Now it's already got one breather hole over here um, but I want to actually get a fair amount of air dissipated out of that drum otherwise it will tend to be quite a boomy sounding snare drum which I actually don't want a booming sounding snare drum. Uh, last thing before I let you go is you'll notice our tape on the inside here protecting it. You can see the, um, the rubbish that it blocked off. Um, it's kept all the uh, finish on the inside all nice and good, so it did the job. Um, as I said, if it was a client's drum, I would take a lot more care, um, but because this is just one for myself and to show you guys how we do stuff, um, or how to do it at home, I figured, you know, it's not gonna really matter. So anyway, that's me. I've made myself a coffee. You should make one too. I'm Tony Moore. That's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.